There's a risk that I'm going to reveal too much of myself in this video. Don't worry, this isn't a plug for my OnlyFans or anything, but I'm worried that this video might reveal too much about the inner me. The brain behind that confusingly accented voice in your ears. Today's video is about unpacking. A video game that's about the spaces people inhabit and the absolute dreck that they fill them with. And it's a game that threatens to give you a look into my proverbial sock drawer and at all of the terrible things contained within. Mechanically, Unpacking is very simple. Developed by the small team at Witchbeam, it's a game about unpacking boxes in various isometric apartments and houses and decorating them as you see fit. It's kind of like a grown-up version of the dress-up games you would find on Newgrounds back in the day. Just strip out all of the death and nipples and replace them with items from the IKEA catalogue and you've pretty much got the game sussed. It's easy to be glib about unpacking, but I really enjoyed my time with this game. Despite never actually depicting any humans, it manages to reflect surprisingly deeply on the lives of both its inhabitants and its creators. Unpacking is split into a small handful of levels, each of which tracks the chronological progression of an unnamed woman's life as she moves from house to home. So the game starts in a child's bedroom, pulling teddies and Game Boys out of boxes and haphazardly flinging them across the floor, and then you spend a while playing Marie Kondo in Mary Kondos, right up until you reach the millennial nirvana that is full-fledged home ownership. And in each of these levels, your input is always the same. You open boxes, pull out their contents, and put them down. It might sound simple, but this is a game that makes a lot out of the little things. Every object, even tiny little bottles of deodorant, are all presented with an immaculate attention to detail, to the point at which you can intuit the branding on every package or the film on every little DVD cover, and there's some exhaustive sound design to accompany each and every one. Unpacking is punchy and slappy, and I didn't think I would ever derive this much enjoyment from the sound of a bottle of Febreze clacking onto some tiles, but there's a sense of production here that really speaks to the love that went into this little game about sorting out other people's cutlery. Around the edges, you've got a photo mode where you can create awful dioramas and plaster them with stickers and filters. And once you're done with each area, you've got this replay button, which allows you to watch your room assemble itself at hyperspeed, like Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen putting together a DFS showroom. The core essence of this game may just be this. But thanks to all of the little details around the edges, it's surprisingly engaging. In a lot of ways, Unpacking reminds me of the Fulbright Company's Gone Home, a game which also set out to depict a central character's existence via the ephemera under their sofa, albeit one which didn't then allow you to pick up and move around all of these items like some sort of benevolent poltergeist. It's the dress-up mechanic that gives Unpacking its unique edge. Because this isn't just a game about rooting through a fictional character's old X-Files recordings, but one in which you have to directly engage with each of these objects and decide where they belong. The game's happy-go-lucky aesthetic, like if Habbo Hotel branched out into Airbnb, masks a world of very adult choices. Like, if you move into your first house yet, for example, where do all of your tacky old posters go? Do you confine as many of your possessions to your room as possible, like a squirrel hoarding nuts for winter? Or do you sprawl out into the communal living spaces and risk upsetting your housemate's intricately balanced feng shui? What about toothbrushes? Do you share a pot with your housemate? Do they even go in a pot, or do you just leave your toothbrush beached on the sink's edge like some sort of filthy animal? I like unpacking because, on the surface, the idea of just clogging a house with cringy movie posters and stuffed animals is easy. We've all been there, we've all done it. But when it comes to the moment, when you pull that toothbrush out of a crate like the world's worst loot box, it asks a series of unintended questions about you, the player, and your own habits. I think any video about this game has to be, at least to some extent, anthropological. It's fundamentally a game about people. You know, people, those gangly, noisy things you sometimes catch glimpses of outside the window. Because it focuses with such immense detail on one person's possessions, what they bring with them and where, it's a game that functions like a twisted human zoo exhibit, showing us every intimate facet of a single fictional person's life. 
It shows us what they value, what tampons they use, what medication they take. By the end of this game, you've got an NSA hard drive's worth of information on this person and their preferences. And it means that despite never directly showing its protagonist, this game gives you a remarkable, bordering on creepy insight into this single person's inner world. Tim Dawson, one of the game's two designers, has talked extensively about the idea that you can tell a lot about a person from the items that they own, and unpacking is kind of the proof behind that idea. Until I played this game, I never really questioned the inner meanings of my bathroom or my bedroom, but solely based on the contents of a few cardboard boxes, I managed to piece together the minutiae of this digital woman's life. When she started baking, when she first started having sex, her sexual preferences, and it's made me realise how much our living spaces say about us. I'm rapidly approaching 30, and there's a cosmic terror that comes with this game, and especially this video, because I kind of worry about what the footage in the background might say about me. In a world in which our inner lives can very quickly become outer, in which Redditors tell horrifying stories about poop knives and share proud photos of their increasingly Tron-like desktops, I wonder if by showing this footage, I'm unintentionally showing something embarrassing to the world about how I run my own home. It's the question that haunts every YouTube video essayist on those dark nights of the soul. Am I posting cringe? Like, look, it's clear from this footage that I don't really know what this thing is. I've never seen a small metal toilet cage like this. I tried putting the toilet brush in there at first, but that didn't really make sense, so in the end I just piled all of the toilet roll inside, like a miniature prison cell for two-ply. I think that's right, but it does make me wonder if, at my age, maybe I should know for sure what this is. Maybe it's some obvious facet of everyday adult life that I missed the memo on. Maybe the amateur interior decorators of the internet will descend on this video and cyberbully me for not knowing what to do with the toilet cage. That's the power of this game. What I really like about Unpacking is that it isn't just a story you passively spectate, but one which you're constantly involved in. And it might seem innocent at first, but the game very effectively dredges up the intimate details of our lives that rarely get given a second thought otherwise. I mean, this is a game that's actually capable of embarrassing me on the internet. If you've watched my earlier videos, you know that's no small feat. And the most beautiful part of it all is that the creator is in here showing their ass too. Just like in similar organisational games like Wilmot's Warehouse or Little Inferno, this isn't an entirely open sandbox. There are some rules as to what can go where, and so every time you've finished unpacking your boxes, the game will enter a state of judgement, placing flashing red outlines over any objects it deems incorrectly placed. You might place a washing up basket in a bedroom, for example, and the game will tell you, hey, that belongs in the bathroom. Or you might place your copy of Simpsons Hit and Run on a pedestal in your bedroom where it belongs, and in what I can only assume is a glitch, the game will ask you to remove it. It's in these moments that you can see the differences between the creator of this game and yourself laid bare. It almost feels like you're in a direct dialogue with them, every outline like a Twitter argument waiting to happen. Sometimes you might even feel like the creator is laughing at you. Like, of course no normal person would put their dirty wash in where they sleep. And it made me think, why did I ever think this was a good idea? But other times it just bolsters your resolve. Of course the iPod lives under the bed, where else would it go? Just at that most basic Buzzfeed quiz, which personality type are you level, there's an inherent interest in seeing how your habits stack up against those of the game's creator. The game's online marketing even amped up this angle, teasing at the kind of questions that unpacking asks every time you find a shiny new object in a box. Whenever these red lines pop up, I feel like I'm swapping secrets with a faceless confidant. And in the end, I think that's what this game is about. Highlighting and celebrating the differences and quirks that make us, us. Some are small, like a difference in toothbrush etiquette, but others are bigger, like the cane that pops up early on in the protagonist's life, suggesting mobility issues. Despite being just another object in a box, Pulling something like this cane out is like finding a live grenade, because it has the potential to demolish all of your previous assumptions about home deco. Maybe you placed cooking utensils on the highest shelf in the kitchen, or used your book collection to set up a slalom course in the bedroom. The kind of decisions that someone with mobility issues probably wouldn't make. Unpacking is slyly designed, because it uses the effortless language of the dress-up game to do some pretty meaningful things. 
Over the short three hours, it showed me someone else's habits, it asked me to explore my own, and somewhere in between, it actively made me consider the material ways in which people's circumstances affect the way they interact with their environment. That's all pretty deep for a game that plays like this. There's a lot to like about unpacking. It's a sandbox that allows us to exercise our worst interior design habits, and in doing so gives us a glimpse into the lives of others. Shoving as much cack as possible under the bed of a university dorm felt like slipping back into a comfy pair of slippers. But everything that followed, unravelling someone's professional, physical and emotional life through their art supplies and medication, felt like stepping into an entirely new pair of shoes. At times, unpacking can be tedious. You might catch yourself funneling socks into someone else's sock drawer when your own laundry sits unsorted mere feet away, and question what you're doing with your life. But behind all of that set dressing are a lot of deceptively meaningful decisions. Decisions about toothpaste, decisions about medicine, decisions that make you wonder how your own house is even still standing. And all of them give you a degree of insight into this faceless video game character that I haven't seen in any other game. I could recite Lara Croft's backstory to you, but I couldn't tell you the first thing about what shampoo she uses. It almost feels wrong to wonder, and it's that almost dirty degree of intimacy that sets unpacking apart. At the beginning of this video, I said there was a risk that I could reveal too much about myself. And that wasn't a lie. I've scoured through every frame of this video looking for small embarrassments. A tampon box in the freezer, or toilet paper on the stove. The kind of decisions that would make you think I'm some sort of deranged weirdo, like those hermits who live on single-sized mattresses in empty rooms. But in the end, I think that speaks to just how powerful this core premise is. Our houses say a lot about us, more than I ever gave them credit for. I'm walking away from this game with a list of changes in mind for my own home. Maybe I'll move some stuff down off the top shelf, or maybe I'll invest in whatever the hell one of these is. But I'll also take more pride in knowing how much is already in the right place. How effectively and effortlessly my environment tells my life story. Unpacking is the best dress-up game I've ever played. It's detailed, it's thoughtful, it's a love letter to the spaces people inhabit and the stories they tell. But above all else, it's also a harsh reminder that we all probably need to buy more clothes hangers.